In this short video, we're going to talk about why preparing and slowing down can actually save your marriage. As a marriage and family therapist over the past 28 years, something that I've observed that truly is probably disturbing is that individuals, when they get into their fight patterns, they start to say and do things that they can't bring back. When I was a child, maybe you heard a phrase, something like this, sticks and stones will hurt my bones, but words never will. Something to that effect. And what I found is when our conflict is high, we're fighting. What I've found that happens is many people late at night, they're fighting, they're arguing, they're saying things that are so hurtful and so painful. Now, why we do that, uh, there's a variety of reasons. Usually it's because our needs aren't being met. We feel abandoned, we feel alone, we feel like our per partner has done something or they have done something that has put us in a situation where we don't lo no longer feel safe with them, whether that's through sexual betrayal or some other form of deceit and lying. We often get into a place where we spend all, all hours of the night trying to work through, trying to talk through things. Now. I'm going to emphasize here that if we're going to save our marriages, we have to learn how to prepare to communicate so we can authentically communicate what we're trying to say. One of my biggest concerns is that people are trying to communicate when they're ill-prepared. They go into the same fight patterns, expecting different results. It never works out. So one of the things that I'm really trying to emphasize here is if we're going to save marriages, if we're going to help you in your marriage, we've got to learn how to communicate way more effectively. And that really comes through preparation. There's no other way you're going to do it. In the moment, heat of the battle moments, rarely do people have the bandwidth to stop and say, wait a second, I love you and I want to really communicate effectively with you. When you're flooded, when you're overwhelmed, that's just not going to happen. The consequence is, is you get into a, an argument or a discussion, something is said that is hurtful or triggers a painful memory from the past or some other conflict that you've had, and suddenly you're fighting, you're yelling, you're ignoring or avoiding each other. And I've heard couples avoid each other for extended periods of time, days, weeks, months, where they don't really communicate because they're so angry at each other. Yeah, they're still married, but they're not living relationship in joy. I know that you want a better relationship. I know that you want a deeper connection. That's why you're here. That's why you're going through this course. But it's not going to be easy unless we pause to really understand what's happening inside of us. So mental preparation, which we have a whole section on, is one of the more critical parts you're going to do to be effective in your communication. Now, how do we do that? Well, first of all, we have to have some guidelines. If you're tired, worn out, exhausted, you have low energy, it's very wise to say, I don't have the energy tonight to communicate. I want to, but I, the energy isn't there. Can we set aside some time? And this is a critical part. Can we set aside some time tomorrow or on the weekend where we can really sit down and I'm going to do some mental preparation so I can understand what I'm trying to say and pro try to prepare so I can understand what you're trying to say. What we'll go through in another time called deep listening. This is much more effective in our communication if we can approach it this way. So I'm encouraging you to, to have the bandwidth to recognize my bandwidth's low. So recognition, I, I, don't, I don't have the energy right now, but come back. Let's talk about it tomorrow morning. Let's, let's set aside some time tomorrow, this weekend, so we can really have a meaningful conversation about this very important topic. Now, do you see, just even in that conversation, I'm showing that I care. I'm showing that I want to do this right. If you guys, as a couple, can pause just to do that part of it, you're going to be more effective. But you need to make sure that you come back to it. Not coming back to it is non-valuing to the relationship and to your partner. Coming back to it is the ability to say, I love you, this relationship. And right now, I don't know what to say and, and do it in a healthy way. If you can prepare that way, you're going to be much better off. Now, let's go ahead and give another example. Let's say that you have a frustration with your partner and you're struggling to really say it the way you want to say it. If you're struggling with your partner and you don't know what to say, then I encourage you to go through the exercise, how to communicate when you don't know what to say, the seven steps, and really reflect on what the problem is and why it's a problem for you and how to mentally prepare. See, these are, these are so critical 
these steps are so critical because if you're not there, then when you go into this conversation, your partner's look, their nonverbal expressions, their facial expressions, all of those things could trigger you because you're upset. But if you understand that this is what I'm trying to communicate and you're trying to communicate effectively, how do I get this across? If your partner can hear you, and if you're both willing to go through these exercises, when you get to bumps in the road, difficult conversations, you're just going to be more effective. So preparation for communication is one of the most overlooked things you can do to improve your communication. And then truly trying to understand each other, which we refer to as deep listening, which is a skill that we learn, which we'll talk more about. If we can learn to do it effectively, we're going to prepare in advance, then we're going to listen to each other through the deep listening exercises, and we're going to have better outcomes. So mental preparation is actually one of the most overlooked things to effective communication. So I invite you to step back and evaluate, what am I trying to say? How am I doing this? Go through the seven steps of how to communicate when you don't know what to say. And what you're going to find is as you go through this and you develop that as a habit in your communication, no longer are you yelling and screaming at each other. You're communicating what's really important to you. And that's a more effective approach. That's how you can save your marriage. But if you just keep doing what you've been doing, eventually you both get worn out, burned out, tired out, and you begin to feel hopeless or helpless. I'm trying to help you avoid that so you can save your marriage by communicating what's really happening inside of you. If you both are willing to do this, then you're both going to become more vulnerable with each other and you're going to feel safer as you communicate. Thank you very much.